so there was a video scheduled but I'm deciding to remake it because my microphone was too far away and I did not like the way it sounded so I'm going to remake it and hopefully make it shorter than it originally was so on to the title ranting about Rockstar games and gun running I'm gonna get to the main point about gun running because the last video I made was more of a first impressions now that I'm able to get a full grasp of what it is I can make a video about it where do I start I guess I'll start with the whole gun running in a nutshell and if it's worth it no it's not completely worth it it's more of a cash grab for shark cards than it actually is for fun and I'll explain why first of all the gun running operation is just a copy and paste of the cocaine factory for what is it the loss MC business the biker business if you have done the cocaine missions on there you'll be really familiar with how gun running works except for when you steal supplies for gun running it has way better missions than it does the cocaine ones and when you sell the guns they actually give you a little more protection than they do with the biker MC business because usually with the biker MC business you usually have to sell it on a truck like a dumpster truck or a mail truck something really slow and most of the time a truck that has terrible handling and if you try to turn it it just spins out of control so most of the time in the cocaine business it leaves you really vulnerable to jets and other things so I'm sorta of glad Rockstar Games gave us a little more protection cause in the gun running updates when you sell your crates or whatever it is at least to me when I drop them off they're like little crates in a truck so you basically sell them and when you sell them you usually sell them in a surgeon a dune buggy depends on how much you have and if you have a lot you can sell it I, th I think it's a brocade that's what it looks like because I know there's another truck in the game it's like a big racing truck it's either that or the brocade I can't really remember because I've only been able to do it once but it depends on how much product you save and you're able to manufacture there's two things there's research and then there's manufacturing if you upgrade your bunker to both you're able to manufacture your weapons and do research but the thing is when you do research and manufacturing it takes up way more supplies and it takes way longer for any progress to happen so if you want to unlock stuff I would highly recommend just letting it be set to research and fully fill up if you are rich you can fast track it but most of the time there's players like me who aren't rich and it costs a lot of money to do fast track and so you have to pretty much leave it on research and that's one of the issues I have with the game and about Rockstar games is that this gun running update could have been something way bigger where you steal all the supplies and as much supplies you steal you could just sell it for that value right away but of course because Rockstar Games wants shark card money they make it to where it's a copy and paste and it's nothing really different you have to wait in order to make money but you could be making money by doing missions anyways so it's completely pointless just to wait in your bunker to try to have your progress go up for the supplies because it doesn't you have to literally wait two real life days from what I've heard in order to sell a one million dollars worth of weapons and not only that but once you get to a certain point you actually have to have friends to help you sell those weapons because you'll spawn three vehicles and with a span of 15 minutes they all have to be dropped off so you do have to have friends and if you don't and you have the three vehicles there you pretty much waste money on your product and you lose out on a lot because you weren't able to sell that product so it's pretty much a letdown because you want to make most of the money out of it which you still have to wait a long time so you probably won't make that much but if, if you did and you wanted to sell all that to make money you would need three people maybe two if you're very 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 quick but most likely three people and 
one of the problems I have with this online stuff is that if you don't have those people, there's really nothing you can do about it. And Rockstar Games knows that people will just buy shark cards, so it doesn't matter. One of the things I don't like about this update is how the weapon's ammo capacity is really, really low. I understand the heavy sniper has to be balanced with explosive rounds, and I can accept that. Honestly, it would have been good if I had 60 rounds, but I guess 40 is good. But when it comes to the tracer rounds, armor piercer rounds, and stuff like that, you get really, really low ammo capacity. For example, I like tracer rounds, but on the combat MG, you can only get 500 tracer rounds, and on the carbine rifle, you can only get 300. So, even though you can make, like, blue, red, or green, and the bullets will be that color, it is completely useless because you will run out before you even finish the survival or anything like that. You won't be using your tracer rounds a lot because they just run out way too quickly. I think you can shoot the gun four or five times with full clips and then it's empty. And it would have been really cool if it was 9,099 bullets like it could have been. 99,000. I'm just going to call it quad nine so it's easier but... All the other guns with regular bullets, they have quad 9, and so you're able to like pick up regular bullets from the enemies in survival and restock. But the problem is, when you add tracer rounds, you have to go back to the truck after you run out of 500 bullets to refill it. And that will get annoying because you have to keep going back to that truck. So they don't let you refill it from the inventory. and because it's only 500 you're gonna find yourself going back to that truck way more than you should so if they would have at least kept it to quad nine bullets it would have been pretty good but for right now we pretty much have to mouth off to Rockstar's email let them know that it's not enough I understand with the explosive heavy sniper rounds but with the cool tracer rounds and incendiary rounds I think that's what it's called I didn't really pay attention to the name that well but it starts with an I I think it shoots fire yeah you shoot someone with it but it doesn't work with each bullet I think you have to shoot six times and then a bullet will light a player on fire so you can use that for the pistol but again very low ammo capacity so the bullets are pretty much useless unless you're using regular also, the weapon upgrades are very, very, very expensive, and if there was any I would recommend that are very important so you wouldn't waste your money a lot, you can upgrade the tents and colors of the weapons, whatever you want, because it doesn't matter, they're all expensive and they're for your preference. I'm pretty sure that the paint doesn't really have any type of effect, but for the combat MG, I would use a very big scope, the biggest scope there is. Because it will help you see very far away when you're trying to pick off enemies at long distance. Using a medium scope, you don't have much zoom. So, I know people don't use zoom a lot because you're mostly moving. And if you zoom in, you'll stop moving quick and get shot. But in certain situations, it helps to have better zoom. Like if you're getting attacked by police helicopters or AI helicopters, you could easily pick them out of the side guns or pick off the pilot because you have better zoom. So that's what I would recommend for any rifle that you have or a combat MG Mark II. For the rounds, until Rockstar Games patches it and makes more capacity for all the guns, I would recommend just regular rounds. I would highly recommend the heavy barrel if you unlock them because for me, the combat MG seems really, really overpowered with a heavy barrel. So that's something you would want to do if you have the upgraded truck with a what's it called the weapon upgrades and uh there's one thing i forgot to talk about actually the vehicles when it comes to the vehicles it's very disappointing because rockstar games could have made some really good anti-air weapons with these vehicles but like the apc tank when you upgrade it to the sam turret you don't have lock on you can upgrade to one that has lock on but the rockets are not quick at all they're just basically a copy and paste you know rapid fire home and launcher so it's not really that great and then you have it's not for the APC but there is a cannon you can hook to the back of it and again it's a cannon like the Valkyrie that has 
two explosive rounds that pop out at a far distance but you don't lock on with those so without auto lock on you have to really predict like a sniper where the bullets are going to go and you're going to have to predict where the jet pilot's going to go which is not bad because someone like me can use those very easily but if you're someone who doesn't use the analog stick and aim at all you will have a hard time predicting where the pilots are going to go and you're going to miss all your shots because they don't really shoot where the dot is it takes two seconds to hit so if there's someone like me who knows how to shoot it then you'll do okay but if there's someone that doesn't really aim or use an analog stick you'll pretty much have trouble shooting down any jet pilot that comes after you so all the anti-air weapons are pretty disappointing and when it comes to the APC tank, it's pretty cool. It floats in water. The driver can drop landmines, which are really overpowered because they still stay intact anywhere on the map. You drop them until something runs over it. So you could put it on the Ferris wheel. If a player so happens to drive over the Ferris wheel or walk over there, they're going to get blown up. Even if you're at Polito Bay with your APC tank. I've posted a video of it happening before where I was just minding my own business and I got two kills. First time it surprised me, but then the second time it happened, I realized I dropped some, I dropped some landmines on the road, and that made me realize he ran into them and got killed. He didn't realize what was going on though. So, for the weapons like the landmines, pretty impressive. But for the cannon, you cannot control it if you're one player. You'll have to switch seats, which really sucks because with the tank you can control the cannon, but the APC you can't. But in the Ballad of Gay Tony, you could actually control the cannon. So it doesn't make sense how in the previous GTA, you had a better APC tank. But in this one, you can't really use it defensively. So if someone's behind you, well, no, because you have landmines. But say someone with a regular tank pops in front of you and you didn't see the blimps you were paying attention, what are you going to do? You can actually drive out and outrun the tank, but the tank gets about 8 shots on you. You get stuck, and you can't get out, and that tank is able to keep hitting you. You're pretty much done. You can't shoot back because you have to switch turns. But by the time you switch turns, he'll already have 2 or 3 hits on you out of 8. So it leaves you pretty defenseless in situations like that. So when it comes down to most of the vehicles, they're useless. If you want a real anti-air weapon, I would highly recommend you to just wait, do the research, don't pay for it and waste your money unless it's something like, what is it, I think gun camos, because they do have some weapons camos, and then they have some vehicle camos, which I mostly tend to get the vehicle camos, and then if I want something like a gun upgrade, the only gun upgrades I really get are the tents or what are they tents or liveries i think it's the liveries because most of the time the liveries are the ones with the skulls and the diamond shapes or the money signs or whatever it is i don't really look too much at the liveries because again they're really expensive so only spend your money if you have a lot because most of them are like a hundred thousand dollars per skin so yeah it's only worth it if you have money like the tracer rounds but like I said the tracer rounds you'll have to keep refilling up every time you run out which would be very short so I just stick with the regular rounds what else to talk about oh yeah I think that piloting is dead piloting's been dead because of this update it's even killed worse I would not fly around anyone with a helicopter because you pretty much have an explosive rifle. Anyone can have it. You know, a lot of people make money because they either play heist with their friends or they just buy shark cards. So, most likely everyone's able to have an explosive sniper rifle now, just like everyone's able to have a homing launcher. And if you've seen my previous video, you will know how deadly the explosive sniper rifle is. And I'm not really a good sniper to be honest, I'm just a little bit experienced, but you could see how quick I'm able to take out helicopters without a sweat. So it has crippled piloting and people like me were sort of sad about it, but I accepted the death of piloting a long time ago. It's just there's other people out there that are sort of having a hard time wrapping their head around it. I've accepted it a long time ago.
but not only has the explosive sniper crippled air combat but it's also crippled ground to ground combat in other words if you were to fight a player with AR to AR the player loses full health he could take cover behind the wall wait for his health to recharge a little bit then when you're ready to pop out and get him all he has to do is pull out that explosive sniper shoot it next to your feet and you're pretty much dead one hit so it will cripple ground combat a lot because people could just pull it out aim it at your feet blow you up and also if you're in a regular car with almost no armor one or two hits you're pretty much done I think I've seen a video where if you upgrade to 100% armor it won't blow you up instantly it'll take two hits but that's not really confirmed yet in my experience so that's just something I'll throw out there from another video I've seen you can survive two shots but I like I said I haven't tested it myself so I don't know if that's true if it is true it's still too overpowered for land vehicles which sucks because this means that the explosive sniper rifle could get patched in the future but if it does that that means that jets will be a threat again because if it takes four or five shots to take out a jet with an explosive sniper because of the reload speeds of the sniper the jet will be able to take you out before you're able to take those four shots on it and that would be to balance the damage on ground but it would also cripple people from protecting themselves for jets again so yeah you can never win in situations like this but if you ask me I'd rather have the ground be a little unbalanced in fighting and be able to keep a really supreme anti-air weapon than to have the anti-air weapon nerfed and to make it completely useless. I think what Rockstar Games is going to do is make the heavy sniper only have 10 explosive bullets. Again, that would probably be an overkill because if they nerf the bullets to only 10 bullets, that would mean you would have to only focus on attacking a player once with the heavy sniper and explosive rounds because you can miss three or four rounds, but if you're only holding 10, and you're able to finally pull it off you shot five rounds in total that means you would have to go back and refill and it wouldn't give you that much bullets so if player kept going and going after you with a buzzard or maybe a jet and your explosive heavy sniper was the main weapon you used for that well ten bullets wouldn't be enough and if someone just kept going after you and they eventually caught you without explosive bullets you'd pretty much be spawn killed or they'd kill you two or three times and you'd have to go to passive mode so it all depends on how Rockstar Games sees it anyways what do I think about Rockstar Games and what did I rant about in the original video I understand that Rockstar Games wants us to be in a server and they want to keep passive mode as a thing but I'm really worried about Red Dead Redemption 2 because if Red Dead Redemption 2 is created by the same people that made GTA Online, that means most likely Passive Mode is going to make it to Red Dead Redemption 2 instead of Friendly Free Roam. Friendly Free Roam is something we had in GTA 4 where you could be able to shoot other players, but they wouldn't die. If they were in a helicopter, you could shoot an RPG at it, but again, they wouldn't die if the helicopter blew up. They'd just fall down and get out of it like it was nothing. Same with a car. You could blow the car up, but they wouldn't die. It was almost impossible to kill a player, and they could just run around and kill the cops and have fun, going to burger shot without worrying about any harm at all. Then it was later brought to Red Dead Redemption, to where players were able to easily, you know, shoot horses and kill the other players' horses, which would get annoying, but they weren't able to kill other players. Again, the only time I've been killed in Red Dead Redemption was sort of like the heavy sniper thing I mentioned earlier. I had a player with an explosive rifle shoot next to my feet and that turned me into a pile of blood. So that's one thing that killed me before and a friendly free roam but that's only happened once and it probably could have been a hacker so who knows. Uh, but one of the things I liked about Red Dead Redemption's friendly free roam is you could do gang hideouts together and you wouldn't have to worry about someone turning around and killing you. You can go to the saloon and just chill out. I remember a very long time ago I was just watching the pedestrians out in a field playing a violin and I was just really chilled out in the zone I wasn't paying attention to the online world then out of nowhere 
a player came with his horse and he had an automatic pistol I think it was the powerful pistol or whatever it's called a high powered pistol he just started shooting the pedestrians that were playing music and sitting next to this campfire and it shocked me because it I didn't really see it coming it just came out of nowhere and he just started shooting next thing I know I hear gunshots and see the pedestrians fall down and then he just looks at me and then rides away and I was thinking okay so there's moments like that where you can really enjoy and have fun with friendly free roam but if they take that away in the next Red Dead Redemption and they add passive mode that means that the NPC will most likely kill you and you won't be able to shoot back because you can't shoot in passive mode that's just like the problem we have now in GTA 5 where if you put on passive mode and the cops start shooting at you because you jump out of a plane and it explodes or you accidentally run over a few pedestrians and the cops see you and you won't stop that's two stars and in GTA Online you get shot at two stars so there's not really running from the police police have infinite accuracy and range with their pistols so they're always able to hit you even though you're running from them and because you can't shoot because you're in passive mode it ruins the experience so if you're the type that wants to just play around with other players and not get shot you can't really have the option in passive mode because you can't use your guns and if you turn it off any player could shoot you whenever you get next to them so the whole thing about Rockstar putting a full lobby where there is no friendly free roam and everyone's sort of lumped in, it just really sucks because it gives you less options. And I understand why Rockstar Games did that because it makes them more money. You see, if you could go into a friendly free roam and deliver your gun running supplies without getting shot or blown up, it would make it most likely 100% a success all the time for the player. And that means that they won't get frustrated and have to buy shark cards because a jet blows them up. Or maybe a savage that has explosive rounds and they're driving their little crates that pretty much don't have no defense. And that can happen very easily because a lot of people own hydras. A lot of people like to use the jet because it's the easiest way to kill. So it puts players in a very hard situation where their success rate is less than 90%. So, if you get a jet after you, the best thing you could do is go off radar and hope you're not nowhere near the desert. Because that just makes it more of an open target. But, yeah. If you had friendly free roam, you probably wouldn't be able to do that gun run and stuff. Which I'd rather have that. Because if you had to worry about keeping your guns away or getting shot by players or NPC it's just too much of a headache and I'd rather have the formula to where you could just go into a lobby can't get shot but you could shoot NPC I'm just hoping that Rockstar Games can see the light and realize that there's some people out there that just like to chill and not deal with the chaotic world that GTA has all the time but we can only hope because the way Rockstar Games is treating GTA 5 only passive mode you have to do everything in a public session. You can't do it at invite only because it makes easy money for you and they want you to give them money like shark cards. I don't think that's going to happen. I can honestly think that it's going to be the same thing like GTA 5 where you're going to have passive mode. The outlaws will be able to kill you. And I'm talking about the outlaws that are like the AI, not the players. Or the police, the sheriff, they'll be able to kill you. And you'll be able to have your guns taken away just by putting in passive mode. I can see that happening in Red Dead Redemption 2. And that will be really annoying because if you want to just chill out, hunt animals with random people, or do a gang hideout with random people, the stuff that made the original Red Dead Redemption great, that's all going to be excluded away because passive mode takes away things that Friendly Free Roam offered. And... It sucks, but it's the only way Rockstar Games can make money by forcing you to do everything, and I guess it's just the way it is. And another thing I'd probably mention out there that will piss a lot of people off is that I don't think that Red Dead Redemption 2 should even come to PC because unless it's going to have a really big single player, like 
with DLC and stuff, there's just no point. It seems that Rockstar Games only makes their content online and that's because they get more money from it. But the problem with online is that there's a lot of hackers on the PC version and they can ruin the experience by using God Mod, Aim Bots, and other things like that. And if they're not playing fair, that really ruins the experience. But now that they come out in GTA Online with very bad hacks like taking away your money, blowing up personal vehicles with your name and putting you in bad sport, banning your account, suspending your account, they're able to do all that stuff with just a menu and it ruins online play. And that's one of the things that sucks about GTA 5 is that since most of the DLC doesn't come in single player, which is because everyone would be able to buy it and try it, and that would decrease Rockstar's shark card sales. You can't really take the vehicles in single player and you have to go into multiplayer. And for the PC people, well, what's the point of having a Hydra or a PC tank if people are able to just click your name and blow you up instantly in midair or catch you on fire or eject you out of your vehicle? There's a lot of crazy things they could do with script mods, so yeah. Rockstar games is always tend to get their PC versions hacked in multiplayer and there's a lot of cheaters most of the time. It's one of the things that comes with a Rockstar game, but there's really nothing they could do about it. A lot of people just like to tend to use hacks and cheats. Now, I know there's a difference between modding and cheating, so I don't like to call them mods, even though that's what they are, mod menus, but I have used a lot of mods in the past and I do have videos of it. I do like mods where you can customize the skins and I have mods for Saints Row 4 but when it comes to cheating and using infinite health and hacks like that which is mostly on PC it just ruins the game and another thing I'm afraid of is if Rockstar Games decides to not have any single player DLC for Red Dead Redemption 2 and to leave Red Dead Redemption 2 a multiplayer based game with all the content added there because at least in single player, like in Red Dead Redemption, I can keep my tomahawk and my explosive rifle and all the DLC added. But games like GTA 5, say the game turns as old as Vice City is today and the servers get shut down or it's pretty much hack galore for all the modders, you won't be able to get that stuff in single player. And if you wasted like 500 to $700 in real life, probably more, on shark cards, you wasted real life money that you probably can't get back. I'm pretty sure you can't get it back because it's Rockstar. And you won't be able to enjoy those items anymore. And that's because of the hackers part. But if the servers get taken down, say Lizard Squad decides to hack the servers and shut them down for a month, you won't be able to get your Valkyrie, your Hydra, or anything you bought and enjoy them. Because, well pretty much the servers are down and they were never added to single player so that's one of the things I'm scared of and if multiplayer DLC is the case then it's probably not worth it to get it on PC because most likely there will be cheaters on that version and if all the content is being added to multiplayer most likely it will be a waste of time the reason why I like the console version of GTA is because at least the console version of it is not cheated to death. I don't see any hackers or cheaters on the PS4 version of GTA 5, so I'm most likely going to get it on console because I know I'll be safe there. For PC players, most likely because of all the anti-cheat stuff that's happening in GTA 5, I'd be really shocked if Rockstar Games came out with a Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC because of all the cheat trouble they're having now on PC but if, if they don't I'll understand because too much work to be put in that game for a PC port when people won't be able to enjoy it and if they do release it like I said I'll be surprised because it's just hack galore for the PC port of GTA 5, GTA 4, you name it. So, that's just my thoughts on it. People get mad, they can get mad. I'm not against modding. I'm just against cheaters, and I know that the PC port tends to get hit with a bunch of cheaters because it's an open platform. So, wow, this video is actually still 20 minutes, but 
I was able to get my point out way more clearer than the original video, so I'm actually kind of glad I remade it. Anyways, that's all I got to say about it. I'm out of here.